<laughs> Today it's the third day in Cape Town. Uh, I decided that I want to emulate Luke and I basically want to be Luke, so I'm deciding to get my hair cut. He's doing a number one all over. I also think that it'll look really hardcore. With my eyebrow piercing, I look like a hard man, a big physical strong man. So we're doing this, and then I am going to peel off and uh, do a couple of things today. I need to pick up my bus ticket from Shoprite. I'm also going to. Uh, I've found uh, there's word that there's a, a football kind of exhibition, art gallery type exhibition event thing in the Woodstock area. I'm going to check that out. And then I'm going to go into town. And later on, I'm going to meet a good friend called Jasmine. And we're going to watch Brazil against Ivory Coast. Now, perhaps we should talk about that game. There was a tepid draw between Ivory Coast and Portugal in the first match, and Brazil some might say narrowly, but I think clinically defeated North Korea 2-1. Uh, and it means that both Portugal and uh, Ivory Coast, assuming that they were both to lose to Brazil, which is a big assumption to make, it would then leave them both having to out-score each other in their game against North Korea, which isn't really a very aggressive strategy. It's quite good to leave them to chance. England, on the other hand, well, they've done very badly. Drew the second game in possibly the worst performance I've ever seen on a football pitch. I think when you're watching it live, you really get to see some aspects of the player's attitude off the ball, which you don't obviously see when you don't have the full view of things on the television. And many players just seemed lethargic or lazy or disinterested. It really did seem like one of the uh, BBC analysts was saying that they, there's something, I think it was Graham Taylor said, there's something going on behind the scenes. It seemed like they really didn't give a shit and I was really surprised by that and disappointed and I was one of the fans who booed England off at the end of the game and um, rightly so I think because people have paid thousands of pounds to come here and regardless of how much they paid, that's just, you know, if you're playing for your country you don't play like that. And, and that's the other thing that we three were talking about yesterday was if you look at other countries even if you look at Cameroon yesterday, they showed so much passion and energy, it was actually quite disappointing when they lost because they put so much into it. Whereas if you look at England, I mean, they don't deserve anything. You know, what kind of neutral supporter would, would follow or support or want England to go through when they don't even look like they can, you know? And what's happened to the passion that England players in years gone by have shown? Players like, well, Gascoigne, for example. The passion he showed when he got a second yellow card in the semi-final in 1990. You just don't see that anymore. And I think there's a big disconnect between players' loyalty and duty to their clubs and their feeling for their country. There's a lot of words about how it's an honor to play for your country, you know, you know, only a few people get to wear the England jersey, stuff like that, but it's, it's words, it's empty rhetoric as far as I can see. I don't think they actually feel like that. I think Part of that is their wages and salary. There's a big disconnect between players and the ordinary person. And I think that has you know, that's begun to feed into their sense of patriotic duty. They're not accountable to anyone. So, you know, whether they win, lose, or draw, the only people they're accountable to are the people who pay their wages, and that's the club. And that's where their primary duty and loyalty goes. Money talks, and I think that's the big lesson from England's performances in this World Cup. So I'm very disappointed. But I go to Port Elizabeth hoping that we'll be able to put in a winning performance against Slovenia to take us through. But then we could face any of, uh, any of three teams which I wouldn't give us great chances against. Serbia are a very good side. Ghana have got spirit which we don't show. And Germany, obviously, you know, we can't beat Germany ever, so let's see what happens. Anyway, Just thank you. Tell me one thing before you go. What's yeah. up with the pirate look? The pirate look, okay, basically I've got this eyebrow piercing and I'm trying to protect it from the ravages of disease which are <laughs> in Luke's hair. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't watched these hair clippers, man, I'm telling you. No, I mean, we had to do some, myself and the, the camera lady, if she'd like to introduce herself. <laughs> okay, right. Say hi. Hi, I'm Marion. <laughs> she, uh, we, we both decided, well I decided, and she kind of <laughs> acceded to my request to cut my hair. And then we came upon this hideous confection of old bush hair. <laughs> <laughs> clipper hair but anyway. Well, it's only a few days old.
Yeah, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> We're just making a joke. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you later. I'm going to be in Cape Town City Centre. I'll probably go to Long Street and we'll, we'll do a little bit of a review of that. Cool. Good.